Are you in the market for a low-budget custom keyboard with RGB 60% in tactile browns? Well, then you came to the right place because that's exactly what we're reviewing today. An MZ60 by Mizar slash HK Gaming. Let's get in the video. All right, guys. So quick disclaimer, this keyboard was sent to me by HK Gaming slash Mizar. Uh, I don't know exactly what the whole Mizar HK Gaming thing is. I imagine Mizar is maybe just a different version of custom keyboard or new brand naming by HK Gaming. So I'm not entirely sure. However, I did get this Mizar MZ60. Um, and on the box itself, it actually looks completely different than what came in the box. The actual one that I received was the all white MZ60 with RGB and USB-C connection. Also, in the box, you'll get all of the other goodies, such as the key switch puller, as well as the keycap puller and the USB-C cable. That's pretty much it. Also, the version which I received had the Gateron Browns in it, which are probably some of the best in the world as far as key switch goes. <laughs> <laughs> now, with all jokes aside, uh, I did want to say that I did take this keyboard with the custom keyboard aspect in mind, simply because this is one of the most requested and questioned uh, keyboards that I see in like so many videos and comments on lots of videos that I watch. I mean, I mean, I go deep into the keyboard videos on YouTube. Like I, it's bad. I lurk really hard, really bad. And this keyboard, the GK61, the GK64, the MZ60, these are pretty much the exact same keyboard, uh, just different names, different colors, different uh, switches, different versions of switch connections, such as optical and uh, switches. So let's get into the video. Let's talk about this one. So first off, also, uh, I didn't keep the Gateron Browns in here like I said I probably would. I didn't. I, I swapped these out. I trashed them. They're gone. They're no more. Sorry, Gateron Browns. Actually, no, I still have them. However, I did end up switching these to a different tactile switch, which were the Holy Pandas. Uh, I actually made these Holy Pandas myself, purchased them from Bolsa Keyboard Supply. Definitely check out their group buys that they have available or other switches that they have available. I'll put a link in the description below. The switches that I made were the Yachtmint Pandas with the Halo Clear stems, which I purchased from Drop, and I pretty much swapped these out, made these Holy Pandas, swapped the Gateron Browns from this MZ60, and put in some new keycaps to accent those. Also, underneath of all of that holy glory, I ended up putting in some foam on the bottom of the tray underneath of the PCB to try and deaden some of that nice echo hollow sound that you hear with a lot of these plastic case keyboards. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into that build and show you guys what I did to this keyboard, how it sounds before and how it sounds after all of the modifications that I did. Even though they are minuscule, I do think that it is a nice sounding keyboard after it's all done. Let's do it now.
All right, guys, so this is the MC60 after I tore it apart and swapped all the switches uh, and everything out of it. Um, some of the things you'll notice about this keyboard is that the plate is like a steel plate. It's very flexible and bendable. The mounting locations for this keyboard are all proprietary, so you won't be able to fit this keyboard plate or PCB into a Tofu 60 case, which would really, in my opinion, be kind of one of the cooler things to do because it seems like a lot of people are going to this keyboard not realizing that they can't upgrade to a Tofu case in the future. So if you're listening to HK Gaming, definitely consider that. Overall, I do think that the RGB of this case is very nice. The USB-C is very nice. Um, the colors of this RGB are actually uh, probably some of the better RGBs that I've seen around in comparison to the other keyboards that I've had. The switches are actually faced in a different direction uh, than I've used to simply for a backlit key capability. I ended up swapping those keycaps out so it doesn't really matter. But keep that in mind, if you do end up swapping the keycaps, you will lose some of that RGB functionality. So definitely consider using those same keycaps or just not even worrying about that RGB backlight after that point. The angle of this keyboard is basically the same typing angle as the GK61, which isn't inherently bad. It's actually one of the best typing angles for the 60% keyboard, so it's definitely functional and usable. When you first receive this keyboard, you will notice that a lot of the key types when pressing this keyboard, it's going to be about as loud as any other gaming keyboard that you receive. So definitely consider lubing your switches or swapping your switches out to something like an NK Silk or other pre-lubricated switches to kind of deaden that sound that you have with this keyboard from the switches. Also, underneath of that PCB is basically just an empty hollow space between the PCB and the case, so you'll definitely get some echo and noise in between that as well, which is the reason why I ended up foaming this keyboard to try and eliminate some of that noise. If you do plan to foam your keyboard like I did, I would highly recommend reading up more on foaming a keyboard and making sure that you test fit and do not screw it in until everything is where it should be, otherwise you could end up bending your plate, breaking your PCB, or even your USB-C connection. So definitely be careful if you plan to do that modification. Also, as far as switches, this keyboard itself is a three pin hot swap PCB. So make sure when looking for switches, if you don't want to clip your switches to find three pin switches. You'll find this a lot in the white bottom get around switches. And if you're not able to find those, you can always get five pin switches and clip off the switch pins. But keep in mind, if you do clip those off, you won't have those five pins in a future build. Overall, I think this keyboard is a great budget option. However, for my personal preference, and that is simply my preference, I'm not saying this this keyboard is horrible just because of this. I would like to have the capability to upgrade this case later or have more customizable options for this keyboard. The fact that it is an HK Gaming keyboard means that it's not gonna have the open source firmware, which I'm more used to using, such as QMK or VIA. And I think that would be a good option in the future. I think it would be kind of cool to see a regular DZ60 PCB mount layout. And it would be kind of cool to see if they can actually perform and give us some really, really budget friendly PCBs that we can swap out in the future. Overall, the consistency and typing sound is very inconsistent simply because this is a tray mount keyboard. But I did find that adding foam did help to spread out and even that sound. So definitely recommend checking out the foam option if you are capable of doing so. As with all 60% keyboards, you are missing the arrows and numpad keys. So you would definitely have to learn on how to do all of those functions later by adding those functions using the function button and adding arrows in later. So definitely recommend reading up on learning how to use the software if you plan to do that as well. As far as aesthetics and looks, this thing definitely hits the mark for 60% keyboards. The RGB is arguably, in my opinion, one of the better RGBs that you'll find in any keyboard. In my opinion, this keyboard is more catered to somebody who is very entry level, doesn't want to solder, and is basically a PC gamer as well. The RGB of this keyboard looks really good, and the switches are easily swappable with any other switch that you can find that is 3-pin. If you guys are interested in this keyboard and you have more questions, definitely leave it in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them as fast as possible. Also, I'll put a link in the description below in case you guys are interested checking this out on Amazon. Keep in mind that all the links in the description below are affiliate links, and I do make a small fraction of money from those links. It doesn't make the price of the item more expensive. It just gives me some kickback so that I can provide for this channel more and continue to create more content. Well, guys, that's it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, definitely consider hitting that like and subscribe. And as always, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.